Where Arts and Adventure summits the airwaves. This is the Ogden Arts and Adventure Show. I'm R. Brand along along with Todd Oberndorfer. And we are your hosts for the greatest arts and adventure podcast in a trailer in Ogden. Uh, with us here, we have a full trailer, actually. We have the guests of the Literary Deathmatch episode. And so, Case, because you put this whole thing together, you have to introduce everybody here. Uh, and by that, I mean uh, the Deathmatch podcast. Not the not the podcast because you know Todd and I sort of do that every once in a while. But yeah. Okay, let me just say it's weird without headphones. Oh, there's some over there. Oh, there's an yeah, extra well, pair. Well, yeah, want some? Live your life. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> give me those because I. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm a different. That's better. Yeah, I'm That's a different better. person now. I feel like yeah, I put on like, like Clark Kent. Like put on my. Glasses. I am now in your head. <laughs> the, <laughs> the second I yeah. get in front of a mic and hear my own voice, I really fall in love with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, all over again. It's you know, I really it changes me. If you want these headphones, you can. Okay. I, wanna, I want you to enjoy this moment. Yeah. Bra. All right. Um, so tonight is Literary Deathmatch. It is at 7 p.m. exact at Happy Magpie Book and Quill. Today we have Adrian Todd Zuniga from, from Australia currently. Oh, from right. Australia. From sure. St. Louis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Joining us for our fourth time in Ogden, which um, he's never going to get out of Ogden again. I swear. It's the truth. Um so tonight we have our liter- we have two judges, two judges, two contestants with us tonight, as well as the as the host. Um, so for tonight we have our judge Dory Guerra. <laughs> that was pretty good. Thank you for having me, Dory <laughs> Guerra. All right, a good friend and co-host of Bourbon Beer and Books. Yeah. Oh, yes, okay. and a master of the macabre. Right. Yes. yes. The mistress of the macabre. Mistress. Right. Right. Why did I say master? I'm sorry. I'm both. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, I own the macabre. You should, okay, there we go. Uh, Maddie Glasgow from Salt Lake City. You want to say anything? Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm not sharing your poem ideas. Not, not until thank another you. Yeah, We got to keep it on locking, key. locking key. Yeah. And, of course, the host. Hey, it's uh, Adrian Tadzaniga, host and creator of Literary Deathmatch. Yay! Yay! I, 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 I should say I live in Melbourne, Australia right now. <laughs> I'm born in St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm going to soon be living to uh, moving to a small town uh, in the south of California called uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Uh, no risk. You'll of have to fires. put a pin. You might have heard of L.A. Oh, that's oh. the same. Uh, right. right, it's the same. Okay. Right. Yeah, and then <laughs> our final <laughs> contestant, who's in the in the van with us, not the van, the camper, at Monarch One on 25th Street, Sierra Grammar. Hello. What would you like to say? <laughs> Hello. Hello. I am here in the bunker. Um, yeah, we're in the bunker. Yeah. Good vibrations My are and not bears. Under lock yeah. and key. Yeah. You know, they're pretty out there. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> We've got whiskey, beer. Ooh, where's whiskey? Right there if you want yeah. some. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, help yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll as right soon now. as I turn this over, I'll, yeah. I'll 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 find it for you. <laughs> um and then of course, Todd. Yeah. And Todd's I think our I judge. Do. I am one of the judges tonight. Yeah, yeah. Todd, Todd said, uh, you know that I'm, you know, when I asked, he said, you know that I'm kind of a smart ass. And I said, you know, that's how it goes. Right, Adrian? Yeah. I mean, uh, last night we had a judge, judge performance in Sacramento, California. It's northern part of the state. And uh, this judge compared everyone to different kinds of coffee. And it was such <laughs> a hit. But then the judge that followed, which is Todd's role, which would be intangibles, uh, she is a firefighter. She's one of the first uh, women firefighters in uh, California that like leveled up to top tier. And she wrote a book about it. She's a hilarious woman. Um, but she just was extraordinary because she brought firefighting, a firefighting perspective. So I'm excited to see what Todd brings tonight, which I think would be probably what will go down as like one of the greatest judging performances in literary deathmatch history. No pressure. Yeah, I mean, that's what I've been telling everybody. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm going to use this opportunity um, before we get to that point to find out a little bit more about what in the hell a literary death match is. Uh, I probably could have done some research before the day of, but it seems like now's a good time to ask. Okay, I'm going to tell you this in 19 seconds. If you're listening to this, time me to see if this is correct. So literary death match uh, features four readers reading their own work for five minutes or less. They're judged by three all-star judges in the categories of literary merit, performance, time. and intangible. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> and intangibles. And then uh, they say lovely, strange things about each of the readers. But in the first round, I've already fucking this up. Uh, there are two readers in the first round, two in the second. 
So they, they comment uh, in a lovely, strange way about each reader, and then they pick one from the first round, one from the second round, and then those two compete in a vaguely literary game to decide who will be the literary deathmatch champion. So there's five readers, six judges? Yes. Well, and- Michael C. Hall uh, of Dexter fame... <laughs> Michael C. All of Dexter fame has judged a couple times for us, and he said that it was a highbrow, lowbrow literary game show clusterfuck, and that's wildly accurate. So, like, the feel of the show will feel like, how is this going to make any sense? And it'll feel so out of control, and all of a sudden we'll be at the end, and everybody will be, like, applauding wildly for who wins and, like, feeling a sense of rooting that's out of control, and then they'll every once in a while it'll tick in their brain that, like, oh, this is just people reading... Um, I shouldn't be so insanely rabid about this, but they can't help themselves. I, I will second that I would cheer for the person that, who wins, and then I will also second that I have no idea how they won. I, I just <laughs> was really excited that they won, and then I had to think, like, I don't know what just happened, but yep. they, but that person won. Exactly. So, yeah. Like fair and square. Yeah, yeah. like fair, fair and square. square, yeah. There is, uh, yeah, the finales are great. We've done, I don't know what we did last year. I think we did a Rhythmalit where I had, I gave more and more complicated uh, equations using book titles with numbers in them. Um, Todd, this will be easy for you. Um, 1984 times 1985. Done. How, <laughs> how many is that? <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a guess. Anybody, anybody in the room, how many is that? A lot. Million. Point three, two. It's 3.9 million and then some change. It's wild. But some people will be like, oh, 10,000. Uh, so we, we basically, we don't want to make it to the final round. You <laughs> Tonight, you do. Oh, if you will be asked to do math. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe. Tonight's different, though. Uh, Case, what, what, what finales have you participated in? Do you remember? No. Um, <laughs> no, not at all. Like, I think there was a movie trivia one okay. once. Have you made something up? From we the 80s? It? Yeah. Um, from the 80s. From the 80s. Yep. Um, one year, the year I met um, uh, Todd, I we were in Salt Lake, and Angelica Brewer, who is our current, like, um, um, Port Laureate. Port Laureate, got wine in her eye. Yeah. Do you remember that? That I was don't. like, oh, <laughs> so she got wine in her eye, <laughs> and that's all she can think about. She's like, do you remember that year I got wine in my eye? And I, I figured that was the final round, and she won. It's, it's not how it went. I don't feel, I don't feel that that is was part of the finale. But uh, you know, <laughs> who knows? Salt Lake is in the rear view. It's Ogden time now, baby. <laughs> you know, it always is. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, moving on. So uh, that's, I, that answers your question. And we're switching things up a little bit. We're gonna switch Dory to performance, performance oh. and Patrick to literary. literary. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Love he's it. he's more suited for that. Okay, great. <laughs> I love it. That, it's, it's great. I'm a wild card. You can't. <laughs> well, to be honest, performance is the easiest category to judge. I know that's why I want it. Yeah, <laughs> literary merit is the hardest one, and I never tell anybody. Mm-hmm. We had Viet Thanh Nguyen read. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, he won the Pulitzer Prize for the Sympathizer. He judged once, and the opening story was by Rashid Newsom. is all about the first time that he had anal sex as a man, right? And it was like this visceral, like beautiful story about him finally having anal sex. Um, and Viet Thanh Nguyen opened his judging by, by triangulating his writing or his reading into three major authors. And he said, it was like Jane Austen meets, and that like killed. <laughs> the buzz. And like, <laughs> <laughs> the buzz. <laughs> Uh, people quit having sex in the crowd at that point. Like we're all turned on. No, um, but yeah, it was it was pretty wild. So I don't know. Yeah, I well, literary is hard. Like the yeah, first time I was it. introduced, to, that's the that's the only time I participated in it, and it was difficult. Like I, because I took it really seriously, kind of like not knowing what I was doing, and I took it really seriously, and I was like, well, you know, you well, I really like your metaphor in the third <laughs> <laughs> and, and everybody's probably like this is the most boring literary <laughs> literary <laughs> judge <laughs> ever and i'm like someday i'm gonna redeem myself but now that i put it together i can't just put myself in the lineup so you know yeah, yeah, and is it or is it important you? that we start to you know pay attention to how many times you'll like drop pulitzer and like 
A-class celebrity names. Or... Yeah, yeah. Like, basically, what I'm going to do on a podcast I'm in Midland, Texas next week is I'll be like, yeah, and then Todd Oberndorfer, he did this. And people are going to be like, that guy's They're going to awesome. lose their fucking mind. Yeah, yeah. They're like, what? I'll be like, he won the National Fun Award. You don't and... even know. You don't even know. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, I did want to ask uh, CR specifically, um, oh, no. having initials, <laughs> do you do it? Having initials? In, like, did you always have initials, or do, are you just like, I'm fucking literary bro i'm coming for the medals and the awards do you have initials i do but i don't i i will sign emails atz but um so you got rid of the last name altogether well basically i went by todd zaniga for 37 and a half years and now i'm adrian todd zaniga but yeah so i thought about initials and then i was like I'm not that literary, but three names is definitely. I am actively like yeah. I'm a writer, man. Let's let's be honest about this. Um, so, do you feel like C.R. Grimmer is a more literary name than your options if you've spelled out your names? Oh, I don't think so, because Grimmer is automatically like dour. You oh, know, right. <laughs> like you walk into class and you're like, I'm Dr. Grimmer, Grimmer oh. than the Grim Reaper. Right. You know. Okay. And then you smile. <laughs> <laughs> like I approve. Wow. <laughs> you no. Know, like you're you're kind of like locked into yeah. a weird German death lord right. persona yeah, when yeah. your last name's Grimmer. You can't yeah. you can't come back from it. And even if you try to say Grimmer with your whole mouth, you end up kind of grimacing. Grimmer. Like ugh. It's you it. know? You could say it with like an accent and grimmer. So do you think <laughs> that is literary? Like are you pretty stoked about that? I think I'm just not very literary. Right. But, you know, CR was more of a gender consideration right. yeah, than, yeah. like, anything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Zoomlandia made that even easier because then people wouldn't get too caught up on it because people would say, oh, you mean Sierra? And I'm like, no. <laughs> that's why I always say CR, the, just right. the letters. Yeah, My yeah. partner's name's MJ, so I just say we're alphabet soup. Oh, that's fantastic. You know? And then it's just kind of, like, it's easy. And then people call me CJ. They call her MR. Right. You that's, know, everyone gets oh, confused. That's so um, good. I used to give people options, but they would get even more confused. And then I'm codependent. Right. So I would be, like, stressed about their confusion. And then I'd be like, you can call me whatever you want. But I didn't mean it, <laughs> which would make them more stressed. Are you from yeah. Utah? No, I'm not. I'm from Michigan, okay, and yeah. then I lived in the Northwest for like 13 years. Yeah, I just because uh, I'm from the Midwest, I'm from St. Louis, so I definitely oh, people am pleaser. Much, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. so, uh, Maddie. You have the three name thing going. Are you like I'm here <laughs> comes the Pulitzer? Like, at... <laughs> I'm very highbrow. Yeah. No, I mean I think I added Lane when I started going by Maddie because I just felt like we need something in there. And that's what my mom called me, yeah. and you know she died, and so we had to remember her. Yeah. Um, so that was good. But I would kind of go by like ML Glasgow. That sounds good. Just like. I would call you ML. Let's That's, start. We right could call you ML. Like if it was spelled yeah. out, people would start spelling ML. your name. Yeah. E-M-E-L-L. Just make it it's kind ML. of difficult to follow. Yeah. 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 We never know. So how do you, how do you I'm going to call you the glass man. That, <laughs> oh, shit. The glass man. Leave man out of this. <laughs> One thing. I do. Think, <laughs> <laughs> I do think it was interesting. Hand up again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Case. You can call me whatever you want. We, okay. <laughs> We have a similar name construction because Maddie and Todd, my middle name, sort of like time, like whatever those names are. And then you've got Lane and you've got Adrian, which are more like we're erudite. And then yours is Glasgow, mine's Zaniga, which gives us an internationalism. But I like that I have like a white trashy middle name. But then now Todd Obendorfer is on this podcast, so I don't know if I should say that. Jeez, that was uh, like super fucking insulting, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, but how I got there, yeah. you know? Two birds, like, one stone. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not from St. Louis. I thought it was like, like Todd Eldridge, like the ice skater. You know? What's that? I thought it was like Todd Eldridge, like the ice skater. Oh, I didn't know there was a, a gentleman by that name. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Super shouldn't... famous from Detroit, oh, Michigan. Really? Well, not from Detroit, from like a white person who says they're from Detroit. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> says they're from Detroit. Like the suburbs, right. probably. Yeah, exactly. Todd, what's your middle name? <laughs> Alan. A L A N. Yeah, what were you going to do? Yeah. You know, I'm just kidding. T A. No, but do you think of Todd as the name of every dickhead from eight, every 80s movie? I do now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it is a popular <laughs> Blaine. 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 Blaine, yeah. Blaine, Blaine or Chad. Blaine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's taken that place. But I'm also, I think it's a good time to mention I'm from Missouri. Fuck yeah. Yeah, so I'm from Kansas City, which is, I feel here, you can't see me, you can see me on the camera here, yeah. St. Louis here. So Kansas Agreed. City, St. Louis. And stuff. <laughs> By a mile. But Midwest boy, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. nice. I like having us around. Yeah. You know? 
Wow, I don't know if this trailer's ever seen that much Midwest before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <It's> a... <laughs> I married Midwest. Does that count? Yeah. yeah. I just yeah. want to... It does. <laughs> it does. I just want to talk in the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> It just feels good. Microphone by marriage. <laughs> this is, oh my God. This is like the longest case has been in, on a podcast, but hasn't been able to talk on the microphone. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> I just, it's so funny for me. I talk too much on these podcasts when I come here because I just have questions for people that are so dumb and so irrelevant to the show itself that if I ask during the show or before the show, I'll sound like a total moron. So it's fun the to questions ask are them. dumb or the people you're talking That's, to? Are no, no. The, yeah. the, 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 my questions are oh, God. absolutely idiotic. The people I talk to are great. Huh? Oh, somebody needs whiskey. Oh, yeah, I'm getting um, whiskey. So anyway, Dory, I have questions for you, but those. I've talked too much. So. No, I think we should. I don't know why I said that. No, Dory, mind. let's get to know Dory. Everyone needs to know. Yes. And yes, I would like whiskey. Three. Oh, Woodford from Costco. Oh. Yeah, the Woodford is still alive. It's barely making it. That's like the Kirkland. Um, that's not from our Woodford. Costco. That is not. We're in Utah Idaho now. Costco. That they cannot sell that in Costco. <laughs> that's that's one you. of the downfalls. But if they Costco, could, yeah, that is a very this is large podcasting uh, yeah, so, 101. Yep. See, no one else could do this themselves in their own basement. This is very special. This situation. <laughs> you can take the girl out of wine country, special but show. you can't stop the girl from importing wine and exactly. nice liquor yeah. into the yeah. state yeah. of Utah. Exactly. We will drive across okay. borders. <laughs> Laws no, will, will be broken. Be <laughs> yeah. so, okay, so I'm going to take us a half a step back and try to find out a little bit more. Your 20-second answer was good, but I want just a little bit more history. This is all, you know, I could I could have found out all this beforehand. No, no. Uh, that being said, I did not. Um, but uh, when did this start? Uh, your involvement from the very beginning um, was it a need that you, you know, did this fulfill that need? I was sitting uh, at a sushi restaurant um, with a very funny friend of mine and a billionaire woman that I was dating. And we I, we were like readings. We were in New York um, and we were like, readings are boring. How do we make re how do we guarantee to make readings fun? And sort of the psychology was when you would go to readings at the time in New York. Wait, you, time out. Put that cable behind. Adrian, because that like is having just contact. <laughs> okay, there we go. Tied up, right. <laughs> podcasting. Um, Podcast. But no kink shaming. Here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we we hide. Yeah, we don't hide the we hide the cables. Okay. <laughs> we were basically like, okay, how do how do we get people to have a five minute time limit or like adhere to a time limit? Because there was always like somebody would come on for five minutes and knock you out. Somebody'd be like, I just wrote this on the subway and you'd be like, oh, Okay, God. well maybe don't read that. And then there'd be somebody who's like, Five minutes, how about I read for twenty two? Yeah. And the rules of readings yeah. are sort of like you just have to sit there and take it <laughs> while people are like going through so many emotions. Yeah. yeah. Um so we were like, Okay, a time limit. That's a great way to like stop people. Um that and, you enforce because you have to ha have an enforcer. Right. Now I will say that one time like our enforcement is basically like I figured out to be like, oh, if you go so long, then we'll come on stage and like get you off and with applause by the whole crowd. And one time, a Baltimore guy made me do it. And afterwards, he's like, I just thought it'd be funny. And I was like, no, I'm like waiting extra minutes so you would wrap up. And anyway, that didn't That's work. Stressful. But uh, so yeah. let down with him. Baltimore uh, in general. <laughs> yeah, uh, Baltimore in general. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, huh? You said down with Baltimore, and I said Baltimore in general. Yes. Yeah. I do I do think Baltimore is an extraordinarily beautiful city, but it has some not as beautiful spots. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so... Readings uh, are boring. Time limit. The other thing was uh, <laughs> we didn't want anybody's yeah. uh, feelings to get hurt, so that's where we come up, came up with a finale. Uh, and because it's like, well, you're winning on absurdity. And then the judges, we were like, well, if we get celebrities to judge, if we get musicians, actors, comedians, <coughs> Todd. like, that'll be fun. Exactly. <laughs> and by doing that, then it's like you're infusing stuff that people are. Uh, the big thing at the beginning of this show was like, why is Moby judging <laughs> literature? And my answer was always exactly. Because it's like people would show up to be like, what what does Jason Reitman have to say about books? But yet they're like, I want to see what that is. Um, and it gave him a chance to probably talk about animal rights. And so it makes there it both. Yeah. yeah. He wouldn't have been able to do SNL, the new movie, without us. Um, Saturday Night Life, or Saturday Night, I guess is what they're calling it. I don't know. So yeah, does that contextualize yeah. it all? Yeah, well, it does. And that was in 2006, um, and then I basically started touring it because I was standing in line at a party in, uh, for an event, 
uh, and I saw this woman working at the door who I'd met in Scotland, and she was like, oh, you should bring a, a literary death match to China. I'm working in Beijing. And I was like, what? Uh, and I was like, oh, wow, we could just take this anywhere? Cool. And now we have 73 cities. I was just going to ask, and you remember, 73 is impressive. Yeah. And Ogden. And, <laughs> yes. 72 and Ogden. 72 and Ogden. Ogden. <laughs> has its own space. So what was the connection to get started in Ogden? I'm guessing yeah. it was this guy. Uh, yeah, it was that one in Salt Lake. There was a, there weren't a lot of people that evening. And I was like, in, I think we were having a conversation. And I think you were a little bit iffy about coming back to Utah. And I said, you got to come to Ogden. Come to Ogden. We'll make it different. And we did. Yeah. We did immediately. And Cheers to Ogden. Um, cheers, cheers, to Ogden. Ogden. cheers to Ogden. Cheers well, Ogden. you know, that uh, first that Ogden. first time... Um, you know, I bought four, four or five boxes of wine and we passed them through the audience and that's tradition now, which is why I got to hit the Oh, I thought that was a donation. I'm so sorry. I <laughs> no, took it I, <laughs> yeah, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Basically, you add alcohol. <laughs> I've been <laughs> purchasing. It brings people together. Yeah, yeah. It does. I thought we had to finish before we perform. What's that? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The several boxes for us yes. and then we go get more. And I'm yes. going to go get more between the podcast and <laughs> tonight. Um, but yeah, and ever since it's been here, yeah. it's been really, really cool. Actually, every single time, even in the, we had a snow, pretty bad snowstorm once. I think we probably had eighteen people in the audience, but it was awesome. Yeah, it was yeah. it was awesome, and um, that's the cool thing about it. Um, if I can take it like a serious note, um, it doesn't matter how many people are there. We're gonna have a ball. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just gonna have a ball, um, and it's worth it's, it's it's worth it. It's worth it to to bring us all together it's worth it to have four different poetic voices it's worth it to um just be there it's it's fun you know i mean we've had 18 i think last year we had 80 yeah. um and so tonight if we have 12 we're gonna have a ball we're gonna have a ball with it and that's what 12 that's plus what, my dog 12 plus your dog, dog. <laughs> yes two, two a two pound dog <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean the one that's gonna uh, pee at the entrance exactly yes. nice yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> gonna come up for judging and be like i pee in front of you oh. <laughs> you don't know if you won or you lost yep. you know <laughs> like which one is that it? might have been the last <laughs> round we I think we might have just given it away um <laughs> yeah no we just love having it here and as long as i have any say in it we will um and right now i have a lot of say in it so well last i, I would say like last year it felt like a culmination of all your efforts and decent weather and it was still cold today i mean people should will be sunbathing but um once they're done sunbathing they can roll in but yeah it's, it is an interesting thing to watch a city sort of like come together around it and some are slower and some are quicker um but yeah last last year was like it was just such, such a cool vibe and i was like oh yeah we finally got it mm-hmm. and i knocked it out of the park i was amazing let me say <laughs> <laughs> let me say you were really good yeah, you were great. I actually was last year. I <laughs> probably not the years before, but you no, know, you were great. Fine. And I manned the wine station yeah. very well. Very like, I drank at the wine. Yes, yeah. we drank. Yeah. And when people came up with glasses to the wine station, I said, "There's a box of Chardonnay, and there's a box of Cabernet. Neither are chilled." And, <laughs> <laughs> and they nobody cared. No one cared, right? <laughs> this is Ogden, right? I mean, I didn't sit down. I just no, stood by the wine. <laughs> he was supervising. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. anything makes yeah. warm white wine tastier than knowing it's not like easily accessed anywhere else for like at least 50 miles. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, Chardonnay is already poison. And then to make it warm, I can't, I don't know if that it's makes wine it worse. syrup. It's wine it's syrup. It's a gourmet experience. Yeah, exactly. You know? I love it. Reduced. You're going to ask a question about to Dory. Dory. Okay. Yeah. So obviously there was Finding Nemo. Yeah. And then like you were punished, you feel like, in a past life with Finding Dory. But also, great, right? Excellent. Like do you like when – or do people – have they stopped doing that? No. Dory <laughs> the Explorer? <laughs> but let me tell you. So my, my – the name of my birth certificate is Dora. And I have siblings with – very traditional names, Jessica and Matthew. Uh-huh. And we would go, you know, to a theme park and they had the little personalized license yeah. plate. Mm-hmm. I never had one. It's like I was a ghost. And then uh, Dora the Explorer came out and Finding Dory, and now I'm a big deal. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not mad about it, Todd. I think yeah. I think Dora and Dory are great names. You're a cartoon squared. Like I am. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 
I want him on name. I'm pleased. It. My name <laughs> means cheese in German. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> so time means death in German. Oh, my God. So you could be <laughs> grimmer <laughs> case. Todd. <laughs> we need a grimmer case. Cheese. Oh. Case. A cheese grim. Yeah. We need a cheese grim. Cheese. Can I just? I, I'm sorry to interject again, uh, but Todd. It's a name I don't think anyone's hosting, so good, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> Todd, I just love everything about Todd. Like your vibe and your face are like I fucking love <laughs> it so face. much. And yeah. you keep like saying the quiet, like elegantly hilarious thing, and I'm just super stoked for you to judge tonight because I like I basically know how good people will be at the show within 15 seconds, um, and everybody here is going to be brilliant. But you are going to do the thing that actually makes me refer to you instead of Viet Tan Nguyen at future podcasts. You know, mm. he, he's mm. really, he's a mm. gift. So when you met me yeah. in 2017, did you think dud? Because I was a total dud that night. I was like, I, I really like I said, I was trying to be so serious. It doesn't take long for writers to get judgy on a podcast. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> <No>. yeah. <laughs> Next thing you know, we're all just like, I, how no, bad I'm, I'm now I'm that <laughs> I will say this, that like I could tell that you were nervous yes. and you were trying really hard, but you actually said intelligent things. So yeah. people <laughs> were like, oh. It was a shock, but you did. It's like, the thing about that, if it, literary merit people can't take it seriously, as long as the audience knows the performance people and the intangibles people are actually going to have fun um, with the show instead of being serious. No, but if they know those people are going to keep it light, then they're relaxed. So it's always funny because the first time the literary merit judge is serious, everybody sort of is like, uh-oh. And then when the performance judge is funnier, they're like, oh, okay, we're good. Yeah. So it's an interesting it's an interesting dynamic. And actually, I've just learned so much more how to inform people and like put them in the frame of mind to get them to succeed. Because before, early in the show's life, way back in the 2006s, I would just be, I, I was more like, oh, I just want you to be you, right? And now I'm like, I actually want you to succeed. So I'm going to give you some guardrails or some tricks. And then if you use those, great. If you don't, like whatever. But... Yeah, so it just sort of puts everybody in a better situation to succeed. So is being uh, a little, like, is that a tactic for the literary to just be like over the top, straight maybe, and, and lead in? Or, I, think, or... I think like the, the best stuff is when you actually say something literary, but then you like wind it into something weird. Like one time a guy compared everybody's uh, story to a little known Nabokov story. And after the show, I was like, oh, I hadn't heard any of those. And he just said, I made them up. <laughs> I was like, amazing. I was like, holy shit. And he was like, yeah, I just, whatever. I just acted yeah. like I do about these stories. Yeah. Which I don't think the audience knew that, but like, that was so funny to me. Yeah. And yeah. So. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay. Yeah. yeah I think well, two or three years ago, uh, Jesse Parent um, here related everything to Kung Fu. Yeah. Because he was oh, taking Kung sumo. Fu. Sumo. 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 And that was really, really fun. But well, Jesse's a world class. Sumo champion? No, yeah. world class um, slam poet. Yeah. Oh, he's won the world championships. Oh. Yeah. So he's yeah. really good. He's amazing. And that came off the back of me learning this one thing. to When I talk to judges, sometimes if I feel like they need guidance, or sometimes I'll just say it, but I'll just go up to them and I'll be like, what, what, what's been bothering you? What have you been thinking about lately, right? And he's like, oh man, I, I'm obsessed with sumo. I go, look, you can do whatever you want, but I'll tell you this, if you compare everybody to sumo, if you're that deep in the weeds, he's like, I'm obsessed, I know everybody's name. And by him doing that, like being like, you came out, you know, your, your, your gait was this way, that reminded me of this guy, and like the headband guy, or what, and he took it to such a weird extreme, it was delightful. Um, Dory, what's your strategy tonight? Do you, are you coming in with a strategy or are you just going to? Well, we just had a switcheroo. Right. You You're going to be doing. I'll performance. be doing performance. Yeah. It's going to be a secret. Okay, great. One time. That means, really that means she has no strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't know how to. Nailed it, Brandon. <laughs> well, Nicole Byer one time judged everybody based on Whoopi Goldberg <laughs> movies. Oh, and I was oh, like. Oh, there we go. That was great. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's. I don't know. It's it's so fun just to watch what people come up with, and the coffee thing last night was really funny. But so how many you so you were in Sacramento last night? Yeah. How many of these do you do back to back in a year? What's your the schedule? Height of uh, the height of it, I did sixty three in a year, and they each Holy take shit. like at the peak of my efforts, they take like forty hours each. So that was a wild year. And then um, this year, I think I've only done two, both in Melbourne. We got a grant. 
Um, it is really fun doing the show with like a real budget where you're just paying videographers and paying. I was like crazy. Um, yeah, because you've had some on. You, you can watch some of these. But, yeah, yeah. Um, you could watch those too if I ever got around to posting them. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. should have used my producers better when I was paying them. But um, yeah, and then I'll be doing uh, four shows this month, and then I come back and do Austin in November. But I'm trying to figure out moving to LA will change the way that I do it. But I'm trying to figure out what way that'll be. Anyway. Yeah. Boring. Let's talk about all you guys. Uh, I think LA yeah. is the perfect place for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I think that's, I mean, I think that's good, right, for tonight, unless you guys want to expand on everything that's going we on. We talked about our names, right? Yeah, we talked about, about that. The <laughs> <laughs> most challenging part of the event. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, Case, uh, please talk about the book festival because you're busy this month and we have to give you a hot second to plug everything going on. For the rest of October. I don't leave anything out. Yeah. I'm officially off the clock. I am not a representative of Utah Humanities on this. No, you're, no, you're not. But swear. you do that. That's your part time job, right? Um, I just know the guy. Just yeah. as a fan. <laughs> so I know a guy fan. who put together a book festival this month. That's right. 130 that's right. events across the state this week in Woo. Weber County. Congrats. Yeah. Tonight we will be at Literary Deathmatch, <clears> and then we will have, um, well, tonight James Cruz is back again. Well, he was here last night and it was amazing. Um, next week is Salt Lake City, the guy tells me. Um, and uh, there are 27 events in Salt Lake City. So you can go to utahumanities.org for those 27 events. They'll start. They actually started today with uh, Arte, Arte de Mexico, which was fabulous. Um, How'd you guy do on his, uh, was it a speech or something that he gave? Did he, did this he guy, I think right? he did pretty good. It was like five minutes. And, you know, he was nervous. Was he, nervous? Uh, he was a little nervous. Um, um, yeah, but I think he decided he did, to do it in Spanish or not Spanish. He did. He decided not to do it in Spanish, just to not murder the, the pronunciation. But I think he did well, and there was an interpreter, so that worked well for him. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so next week is Salt Lake and Cedar City. Actually, next week there's 67 events between Salt Lake and Cedar City. Um, that person who will be at all of them. I heard he'll be flying back and forth. Okay, between, <laughs> uh, actually on a plane between Salt Lake City and Cedar City next week. Um, but there are events, you know, 67 events, and then it, it wraps up in uh, um, the Wasatch Back in Summit County in Wasatch County um, in, uh, on the last week of October. Um, check utahumanities.org, someone says, um, and you can see all of these different events. But this person also believes that the Ogden events have been the best of the month, and they will probably hold that mm -hmm. title. Mm -hmm. I don't see anybody beating it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a speakeasy night. We had a slam night. We've got literary death match. Give me a break. I mean, Ogden just kind of knocks it out of the park. Thank you to Ramp Grants, or Ramp Grants, the person says, um, that the Ramp, if it weren't for Ramp, Ogden couldn't knock it out of the park. But Ogden is really well funded when it comes to our literary arts, and that's why we do it. The first week was in Logan, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. that's when I met CR. And for, no, we met a month ago. Yeah, the, met, someone else you... Well, me and Chris Coquinos were up there. Yes, you were doing a mentor panel. A mentor well, panel. Well, this person was talking about their that own book. That person was, yeah, talking about... Which the, is a fabulous <laughs> novel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that person was talking about their own book. <laughs> yes. And that's where I met CR. Um, yeah. But then last... You know what's weird? That year. person never stops talking about his own book. No, yeah, never. I tell you. Uh-uh, uh-uh. So I got a quick question for you. Do you think the sheer volume of events is sure. in any way to overcompensate for... Height? The... The book banning that's been going on this year, like on a national, international level? No. Um, the amount of events that actually talk about book banning, yes. So we've got seven events throughout the month that actually, they have seven books that the person who puts this <laughs> together has seven events throughout the month that talk about specifically. I think that's book important. Banning. And luckily, uh, Utah Humanities, as a, an, an organization, they can't speak about their own political views, no, of but they not. can obviously bring in authors, authors and books as vehicles to discuss these important That's topics. That's important to know, and it's thank you for clearing that. Yeah, um, so we, so they um, can bring in whoever they want. The books are just vehicles, and the authors are just the drivers to talk about book bans, to talk about everything. They want to talk about, and that's really, really nice because uh, Utah Humanities is a nonprofit and not state-funded. Um, but at the same time, Utah Humanities cannot speak politically about anything. Of course not. Um, can, I, yeah. can I ask you a question? Sure. Like, when you think, because now you're, you're doing this, you're putting together so many extraordinary events. Like, when you 
they're always going to be like those people like George Saunders for me is somebody I always want to do an event with Tobias Wolf who keeps rejecting my advances um, in literary deathmatch and otherwise um, but like are there authors that is there one author that you're like holy shit like I would uh, chop off somebody else's leg and then also like a mid-range person that maybe we all don't know but you'd be like man I would kill like the book nerds might know or maybe not I don't know is, are, is and then somebody that we've never heard of that you haven't even met yet i also want to hear that name so those three that's a lot um <laughs> the number one author yes that's easy like tell if i your favorites are, if <laughs> what's that tell us who your favorites are i mean <laughs> well the, the nobody we can not go me. ahead and take care of that that's uh, uh, let's, <laughs> let's clarify that it's, um um if I, who was just here in Leighton the other night uh david sedaris um, David if, Sedaris was in Yeah, and if I could... That? David Sedaris is the reason that, personally, Case Johnston started writing. Oh, wow. it, it was his work mm. that that I fell in love with and said... Did you tell him that? <laughs> did I tell him? <laughs> uh, I, I, he, I didn't Outside get of his hotel room. I didn't get tickets, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, David Sedaris is probably my favorite author of all time and the reason why I started writing. Um so yeah, if he could be part of the book festival, he was here not part of the book festival because we have, we don't have the budget. Um, we don't have Sedaris money. We don't have Sedaris no. money. Okay. Um, yeah, I know, I know. Um, when it comes to other stuff, I like mid range and others. I would have to think about it. Okay. I have to think about it. Can but, I yeah. tell you? Okay, so I once was working in official PlayStation magazine, and this is when this was like twenty five years ago. And I went to a David Sedaris reading because I'd written his agent to ask if he would write about video games. And then I just loved him. So I went and when I met him so he could sign my book, I asked, I said, hey, I work for official PlayStation magazine. We asked your agent if you would write about uh, why there aren't any uh, gay video game characters. And he said, well, I thought Donkey Kong was gay. <laughs> and it was one of the funniest <laughs> things ever. And I, I just walked away and like, what? <laughs> That's what? so Sedaris. It was amazing. He's an incredible force. <laughs> He's incredible. We saw him in Tacoma probably a decade ago, more than a decade ago, and 4,000, 5,000 people in the arena. Yeah. And he would read yeah. and then take notes on his reading while he was doing reading. And then he sat for 4,000 people mm -hmm. and drew things in their books yeah. and wrote things in the, and told jokes. And he told me a pretty dirty joke. And he looked at me like, oh, this this, this guy's this isn't good for him. He's, I was just so starstruck that I was just looking at him like, well, I don't even know how to respond. Um, but yeah, uh, he's the reason why I started writing. Uh, and when I was in graduate school, uh, I was trying to write like David Sedaris and a teacher said, well, who are you trying to be David Sedaris? And I wish I had, <laughs> you know, wow. and I, I wish, yeah. and I wish, you know, I was kind of scared. Oh, I yeah. just wish I had the cojones to say yes. Yeah. If I could write one essay, like David Sedaris wrote in his, in, in his career, I would be done. I would be done writing. Um, but yeah. Okay. So we're, yeah. So this turned into a David Sedaris podcast. Well, uh, I just want to say, I, David Sedaris, David Sedaris and I talked about colonoscopies one time. When, like when he signed in your book? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. He's, 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 he's fantastic. He's fan yes. fantastic. Um, so many authors I'd love to bring. Um, I mean, this person would love to bring. And the hard part is, is what, we're f what I found between last year and this year is that most of our events this year have been full. We've had a huge attendance, but I reached out to every community um, and I said, who do you want? Instead of, because the first year that I did this job, I looked at authors and I brought in uh, Ruben de Gallardo, who I love his work, oh, okay. love his work. And he had four people, oh, right. you know, he had no, he had zero people. It was me and David Lindez who started open for him and the, the, the bookstore owners at Wellers and you know, well, he did come here and read for van yeah. sessions, which was awesome. I was here for that. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we drank a lot of beer, and he was really happy yeah. about that. Um, but the beer or being at the Monarch? The something. being at the Monarch, I was happy about the beer. Um, but I learned that I'm the plug and play system doesn't work. Even if I fall in love with an author, you bring them in, and, and unless they're David Sedaris, people don't show up because they don't know these authors like I fell in love with them. Mm -hmm. um, I did that last year um, with Rebecca Claren, who, who wrote an amazing book. Um, and The Cost of Free Land, same thing for people at Ken Sanders books. Mm -hmm. you know. So this year I went to each community and said, who do you want? 
And they said this person, and since that, this year has been so much better. Oh, because, good job, Kate. Well, the people at Colville, like the Colville Library, like you bring anybody who talks about trains, we're going to fill this place up. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you bring anybody here that talks about um, the railroad, we're going to fill this place up. And so, right. yeah, so bringing people in is different. This is for three year olds, right? Trains and. No, no, railroads. train, uh, no, trains and mines. And, trains and mines and. Yeah, yeah. I'll never get invited back to August. He's over. It's over. It's over. Guns. Um, don't forget guns, too. We like guns. guns. We like guns. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, well, historically, our, well, but we don't like guns enough. No, if you like our, a lot of guns, you moved to Idaho. Our gun museum is in the <laughs> train I mean. museum. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. yeah literally yeah. in August. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, right. Anyways, that was a lot. Sorry. So about if you that. write like oh, no. poems satirizing guns, you're gonna have a big audience. Sure. In Ogden, <laughs> maybe. In Ogden. Yeah. In Ogden. <laughs> uh, Probably not. Because I just want to shoot my shot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. Go for it tonight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. If you've got that one in your back back pocket, go for it. Um, Anyways, that was a lot. Sorry about that. I love it. I think it's really interesting. Right. That was good for most of it. <laughs> uh, Todd, I'm sorry I volunteered you for this tonight, but I hope you do a good job. Oh, well, I'm Don't make fun. me look bad. He's going to be a hit. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Um, all right, got to wrap this all up. Uh, because... Oh, one last question. Will there be warm white wine? Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. I'm yes. going okay. to the liquor store now. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, good. Last and there's not enough time to cool, to chill it. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do not, and under under any circumstances, take it off a hot stove before the show starts. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> Adrian, do you have anything else? Uh, I just wanted to ask everybody in this room who they think would win tonight as a closing salvo and... and just throw people to the wolves mm, in yeah, this okay. question. Fair. By way. Not me. Does it have to be a contestant? <laughs> <laughs> Ogden is the winner. I vote, I vote Dory. Yeah, I was going to say Dory as well. Oh, I was going for Todd all the way. So I was going for Dory, so I think, oh, wow. think okay. the votes yeah. are yeah. for Dory. I am going for the wine station manager and <laughs> <laughs> and his assistant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be drinking. Yeah. Okay. The, I'll be honest, though, I'm hearing good things about like the host. Yeah, so we'll yeah. see how it goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Snap, that champion. Oh, I won the fourth show ever out of now 554. By the way, I'm doing a Hans Christian Andersen monologue tonight, which is going to change most people's lives. I just want people who hear this days or weeks from now. To know what they missed. Yeah, to yeah. know that when they walk by people on the street who are just walking with a lot more verve, that it's because they were at the show. As judges, can we wear headphones? <laughs> 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 I mean, on that note, uh, thank you to Banyan <laughs> One for powering today's episode of the Ogden Arts and Adventure Show. Listen and subscribe um, to Ogden Arts and Adventure on YouTube. Look for us on Facebook, Instagram, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the Banyan Collective.com, and the Podbean app for Android and iPhones. Good luck to everyone here this evening. I hope you all are winners. I know we were here today on this podcast. If you want to be on the show, DM us at Ogden Adventure. If you found value in this podcast, you can just send us all your money at yeah. buymeacoffee.com slash banning media. We'll take you out with a little bit of outdoor jukebox as recorded van sessions as recorded at the Monarch building. This is regroup um, from bad luck brigade. We'll catch you next week on the Ogden arts and adventure show. Woo! Woo. Yeah. Woo. Get it. Get it. Hey.
I know it's cause I keep it too real, so Now you let me all bad shit and so I start dust Remembering the time when he ain't kill size They spend on my full time dust to the new dawn Still got my number, hit me up, let's do some I've been growing to an old age, thinking in my own cage Cutting up my old ties, if you hit me up, I would recognize all the times that you in the war Cadillac Brigade on Van Sessions.